Um, this video serves three purposes for two different groups of people. The first purpose is uh, for me to do an attempt to explain what the emergent church is, sometimes called the emerging church or the emergent church, sometimes called uh, the emerging conversation, the emergent Christian conversation, any of those phrases. What is that? And second, it's to do the first thing for a group of students that will be part of a one-time, one-shot class that I will teach in April who want me to help them answer the question, what is this emergent church thing that I've either been hearing about or have been told I should be hearing about? And third of all, I'm interested in doing this what is the emergent church video to throw another thought out into the world of the internet and to seek critique, comment, question, or concern from everyone else who's out there. That is to say, uh, those of you who follow the image of fish um, and or know my work on the internet from other places, what do you think about this? Did I, did I get it right? Did I get part of it right? Am I in the right ballpark? And that way your comments too will be part of what the students end up reading and reviewing for April. Uh, so, hello all of you, whether you know me or not, one way or another, you will come to know me, I imagine. And um, without further ado, um, here's the Emergent Church. Boom. You'll note that when I said that, nothing magical happened, and that's actually pretty important to consider. Regardless of what you have heard, or, or have um, heard rumored about the Emergent Church, it's I don't believe anything particularly special. So to begin with, I should clarify that that doesn't mean I don't like it or that there's anything wrong with it. I also don't think it's any uh, more salvific than anything else. It is not, we'll start with a not list, in my understanding, a denomination. It's not a particular set of beliefs and it's certainly not um, very cohesive. So that leaves the question, well, what is it? Well, there's some historical answers to what it is, and I'll put some links below for you to take a look at in terms of um, where did it come from, how did it get here, um, where is it headed. But what I want to answer in terms of what it is, is just experientially what my um, interactions with various people who identify in, as emergent have been. That's to say, it's a group of folks who, admittedly at this point in time, are mostly white and it, just experientially are mostly men, although it's certainly not always the case that that's true. I will say that in terms of my experience, that is the case, who have on their hearts a couple of questions. One, how am I to be a Christian when a lot of the things that I was, was raised with and or that um, my tradition tells me being a Christian is about or culturally is about, I have an issue with. How am I to be a Christian when I have issues with either how I was raised as a Christian and or what the dominant tradition in my life says a Christian is. How, how do I approach those two? And these people, by and large, say, I'm not willing to jettison the church. I don't want to leave the church. There's something in there that speaks to me. It's part of my faith life. But I don't know how to approach it, and I can't just uh, replicate what my parents have done or what the generation before has done. What am I to do? That question, it seems to me, is at the heart of what the uh, emerging conversation is. There are some folks who say that there's a bigger thing um, afoot. Um, Phyllis Tickle's book, The Great Emergence, suggests that we're in a period of, um, of upheaval and renewal, uh, akin, perhaps parallel to what was going on as part of that big project that the Reformation was. Uh, I don't know. I don't really know the large um, metaphysical or historical arc of this. I know that because of various conferences, um, websites, and little gatherings of people who identify with Emergent, I have been in conversations with people I have never been in conversation with before and would not have were it not for this thing called the Emerging Church. I've had conversations with Pentecostals from the Midwest, with staunch um, Bible college schooled pastors, uh, with folks that are developing em emergent communities where they're living together under a monastic rule in urban areas, in, in farm rural areas. Uh, I've talked to men and women both who are pastoring communities that identify as um, 
pan-denominational or trans-denominational as opposed to non-denominational. I've worked and worshipped with folks who are part of churches that have almost as many people regularly attending it who do not identify as Christian as they do who do. And everyone feels a sense of hospitality and welcomeness and, and gratitude. So these are things which are um, not necessarily new. I certainly think that there are aspects of this hospitality and openness and welcoming that are present throughout our Christian history before, but are um, arranged kind of in a constellation around this idea of the emerging church in such a way that people identify it as opening, welcome, generally progressive, um, a lot of times um, biblically literal, they, a lot of times people come from a, um, an evangelical background where the, the Bible is an enormous authority and people have a very good sense of scripture, um, but they're using that sense of scripture and interpreting it and, and living out a, the Christian witness in a different way than would have been done as an evangelical had maybe 50 years ago. That's led some people to say that the emerging church is a post-evangelical movement. Some people have led to been called say it's a post-denominational movement. Um, for me, it's not that. Uh, I am a member of the Religious Society of Friends, what most of you all would call Quakers, and that's my home. That is my denomination. And I've heard this idea echoed by a lot of other folks that I've encountered as part of the emerging um, church conversation, which is they have their denomination, and what the emerging movement, the emerging conversation does, is it puts them in touch with other people who are on the edge of their denomination, who are asking questions that maybe some other folks aren't asking, or not many people are asking, or it's not the mainstream question to ask within the tradition, and it puts them in conversation and dialogue with one another. That's to say, in my conversation with evangelicals outside of my tradition, with Pentecostalists, with mainliners, with um, evangelical um, Lutherans and Episcopalians and Anglicans, with all of those people, folks who sometimes feel on the edge of those traditions but feel rooted in those traditions, I learn more what it is my tradition has to offer to, to the world and to Christianity writ large. And so for me, the emerging conversation is, a, is just that. It's a conversation of people on the edge of their traditions trying to figure out what it means to live into Christianity um, these days. Tend to be fairly liberal and progressive. Uh, and again, in my experience, it tends to be young um, and white and men. I'd say at least two-thirds of the people that I've connected with uh, tend to be that. But it's certainly not always. There are communities that are very diverse in age, um, sexual orientation, religious background, um, and any number of other factors that you could think of that would um, diversify an, an audience. Where it gets dicey, of course, is in critique. And a lot of folks have pointed at the emerging church and said, look, you don't even know what you are. You can't define yourself. Your answers are very wishy-washy. You won't come down on what it is and isn't. And as a result, you know, you are you're a victim to relativism. You don't know what you believe. You don't even know what other people should believe. You don't even know if there is a right or wrong. You know, you're, you're the devil's work. Um, and it's very easy to go onto YouTube or any number of other places and look if, at the emergent church and hear all sorts of claims made against it. Uh, most of the time, I experience the claims made that the emergent church are satanic um, tend to uh, portray the emergent church as if it was a solid movement or a solid denomination. And while there certainly are churches out there that identify themselves as emergent churches and they don't have a denomination, they're pan-denominational or trans-denominational, for as many of those churches that are self-identify as kind of upstart uh, emergent churches, actually the building and the congregation, there's is many more who just are part of other congregations and other denominations who are involved in the conversation because they've read a few books by people that get identified as emergent, they're interested on thinking on the edges of their tradition, and are still identifying themselves as Christians within a particular stream, but are asking some questions that don't always fit so nicely within the boxes that our traditions have set up. So be aware of that. Be aware that the emergent church tends to get criticized. Um, when it's criticized as a monolith, I think that that's unfair. I think there's as many different kinds of folks that identify with emergent as, um, as you could possibly imagine. Um, so the criticism there tends to be around relativism, around um, 
about postmodernity, uh, and you can link to another thing that I've a video I've made around what this whole postmodern thing is from my perspective. Uh, it gets accused of using a uh, Humpty Dumpty language, which is to say uh, emergence use language and they twist words, specifically scriptural words, to mean whatever we want. We perform some kind of a, a regular eisegesis. And um, probably there's some truth to all of those criticisms. I just want to make sure that you know that they're out there. Um, my experience, though, is that at its best, um, it is an authentic representation of the Christian message and, and the Christian call. That is, to a radical hospitality, which welcomes and embraces the other, no matter how strange, regardless of um, their skin disorders, whether they're prostitutes or drunkards or uh, from another denomination, whether their sexual orientation matches what we think an ideal one should be or not. Regardless of all that, it says, welcome, come in. We need to figure out how to live together um, in Christ's love and under Christ's name and rule um, somehow. And the plans for that, we don't have. So let's get working together to figure out what those are supposed to be. And of course, just like any organism or, or, or ecology adapts to its environment, so too does this emerging conversation. There's all kinds of folks all over this country who because of different space and place and time and tradition and energy and age are engaging with this question in different ways. As, as a 20-something with a, with a young daughter and a new house in western New York, my engagement with these questions of what do I do with this new stuff is absolutely uh, contextualized by all of those things and by my tradition within the Religious Society of Friends. It's going to be different um, anywhere else where people engage the question of what are we to do. Um, so it's a series of tools and it's a type of conversation and a um, a way of considering what the way forward is, given that there's so much multiculturalism and Christian diversity around us. That's my understanding, at least, around what the emergent conversation is. There are other people out there who understand it as a new denomination, or the call for the end of all denominations, or a uh, satanic offering with uh, willy-nilly relativistic language. All of those other opinions are out there, and you should know about them. But my position is, it's a stream of interpretation, a way of asking questions about how we're supposed to move forward in this day when there's so many opportunities around us and the question and clarity regarding how it is we're to follow Jesus in, in, in this life uh, while we are on the earth is, is up in the air. And, and some of us are looking for ways to authentically do that. Um, some links below, some other opinions, some other thoughts, historical perspectives, and um, I know it's not particularly concise, that shouldn't surprise anyone who knows me, and um, if there are people who have a short, concise idea about what the emergent church is, and you want to post it in the comments below, I would love that. It would be great and possibly useful to the folks who are going to be in this class in April, and if you have any questions or comments, um, let me know.